Hi, it's Jeff. And Denise from MouseSteps.com. And this is episode number 161. 161. Of Mouse Steps Weekly. Sponsored by Theme Park Connection in Orlando, Florida. And Big Doings next weekend. They're having a Sunday kickoff event. They're going to be open Sundays from now on, starting October 4th from 11 to 6. There'll be prizes, special guests, stuff like that. We hope to be there. And if you mention Mouse Steps sent you, you'll get 10% off your entire purchase. Plus, online, there is a place when you check out to uh, add a discount code, you put in mouse steps and you'll get 10% off online as well. So that's pretty cool. I like that. <laughs> I know, I know you do. And pixievacations.com. Uh, they are our official travel agency. We're thinking about food and wine, which we're just going to be talking about today and Halloween and Christmas. And this is uh, this is a time to be booking for the fall and winter seasons. Yeah, and also we have the uh, winner of our latest contest to announce. It is Marie Storch, and just uh, write us either on Facebook or uh, Denise at mousesteps.com with, uh, with your information, and uh, we will send that along to Pixie Vacations. Right. They are out of town this week, so uh, we'll have our next contest on next week's show. Yes. And also, Maple Leaf Tickets, our official ticket agency, the best deals on tickets in town. They have tickets for all sorts of great events. Locally, check them out. We are going to talk about Epcot's Food and Wine Festival 20th Anniversary I recommend not being hungry when you watch this show because it will be it'll be bad news for you. <laughs> and the funny thing is, Jeff wasn't sure if any of you guys were going to be interested in the food and wine festival. <laughs> if any of your you know if our viewers were interested, and then we met like twenty of you. <laughs> like so, actually, all of you are here yes, apparently at yes. Epcot. Every this viewer week. <laughs> seems to be at the food and wine. It was wonderful though to meet so many people, and we appreciate everybody who stopped and said hello. Uh, again, that's the best part of this whole thing. It was great. It was very nice. So another thing I want to mention before we get uh, too into it is all the food we we show you today we bought with our hard-earned money yes we, there was no special here you go try our food thing for us no media thing for us this was just us going to the festival and uh and we had a great time i'm glad we did but uh, it, it's not cheap Let and me that's tell you that. and that's why we try to keep it you know we have to keep it cool because there are other things we want to do also and not just eat all with all our money <laughs> and we were already at jock Lindsay's, which we're not talking about no yet. Time. not till next week but we were the first into jock Lindsay's, and it was not planned to be first so That's that right. was very interesting we'll too. get into all that next week first we're going to look at some of the decorations this is actually from the unofficial preview day which is thursday the day before the festival officially kicks off and these characters seem to be around uh, all over the place well they're they're supposed to be taste buds i learned uh -huh. that from the annual pass holder guide that we received but they remind me of the making of me making of me <laughs> yes look I mean. into that that is Especially a former her, wonders little... of life uh, attraction <laughs> so we won't uh, explain That's anymore about it. <laughs> you can look into it oh here's one of your favorites well last year they didn't have the cranberry bog so i'm glad that ocean spray that it was brought back this year uh you get little craisins, craisins. yes and yep. craisins will make an appearance in a few of the food items also they have this display of some of the favorite items over the years again it's the 20th anniversary of epcot's food and wine festival so they have more of these i'm just showing a few because it's a pretty long show and there's mickey and he's uh cooking there mickey's making me hungry that little mixed <laughs> grill if they had something like this i would get that sample wouldn't yes. you yes that's a very hefty they would <laughs> never have that sample here at the festival would they and i i will say we sort of have a love-hate relationship i don't want to say hate but with the food and wine festival because it's like well you could either spend let's say a hundred on samples or you can have a couple of nice meals so you know, I'm not sure which one. Like, sometimes I just like having a sit nice sit down. Right. We always like the festival until we do it for about three days in a row. And, and, uh, you and know, after that, we don't buy yeah, anything else. That's right. And one last look at the uh, cute little cartoons. Again, they do remind us of Epcot past. So it's uh, it's very nice. I think that I have to say they did a great job with uh, decorating this I year. Do, I actually agree with that. I think this is one of the nicer ones since the Remy, the Ratatouille, which I believe was 2007. And uh, here we are at the Dominican Republic. I think this was the second year. Yeah, it's a different setup. I really, I just wanted to show the setup because this is one of the areas that is not normally uh, you used, know, for, used anything. for anything. It's normally just grass. So uh, we didn't try anything here. This will be the only area we show that we didn't actually try anything from. But again, I thought it would be nice to kind of show this is more into the decor area <laughs> for well, us. It's pretty incredible how Disney makes something really nice out of nothing. I remember when Spain, and I think this might have been 2007 right. or 8, uh, came into being and everybody thought, oh, Spain's be going to become a country because they did such a great job with it. Sort of like here, it's like, oh, you could almost have a country right here. 
So again, to set this up, this is actually the preview day. This is the day before the festival opens. and They uh, call it a soft opening cast member, like a cast member uh, test. Correct. So um, it is much less crowded, even with as many guests who know about it. Like Friday was crazy, but uh, Thursday is actually quite nice. Yeah, I would say it's the best day to attend the entire festival. The only things that aren't open is the festival center and uh, you know some of the special meals and dinners and things like that. But all the bo- every booth just about was open. Probably all the booths. Probably I did not see one wasn't open. The Remy, Remy the game, Remy game. You could buy the game, uh, the pieces, and actually start playing. So we definitely recommend at least even just to get a, a early start and try things. Like next, it's every year the Thursday is open. Right. So we started with the Cheese Studio on this. Uh, test day and i don't really eat cheese so jeff is going to have to talk about it i did try uh one thing but you tried the trio well, you, yes i tried the trio and you ch- tried the cheese fondue with sourdough bread and i like bread so that's more what i was going for was the bread and to try a little bit of the cheese so this is new this year the festival really is spreading out further and further into future world which i think is great and I'll, i did notice in the afternoon on the busier days Future World was less busy because everybody was in World Showcase. So that's a good uh, tip to remember. If World Showcase is nutty, (laughs) head over to Future World. Here is the first thing uh, we tried. It was the artisanal cheeses, three different cheeses. You had the uh, Cave Age cheese. I had the (laughs) Cave Age. Well, this one is the uh, Oregon Blue Cheese and Berryport Compote, which I liked a lot. Goat cheese with craisin bread in the middle and uh, Cave Aged Cheese with Honey, which was really good on the left. You enjoyed the craisin uh, bread Just a bit of the bread, but not with the white stuff on it. Right. I didn't didn't care for the the goat cheese. I'm never a goat cheese fan anyway, but the other cheese I thought were very good and I'd get it again. And I tried, um, I don't know what kind of cheese this is with the fondue. I know nothing about cheese fondue because I, I'm really not a cheese person unless mm-hmm. it's like mozzarella on pizza or lasagna. Right. But um, but I enjoyed the, the bread and I thought it was a nice value. I think it was like three fifty, and you had the fondue and the this nice little roll. So we're going to move on to probably the star of the whole event for us. This is the France Pavilion. We tried just about everything and everything was outstanding. Uh, although I want to show you they have a new booth now, a much bigger booth. It was well needed because the old area was so small and uh, they're always very popular over there. Well, it's just a very nicely done. They actually, you know, have new artwork and the booth looks, I think the booth looks very nice, very very French. Yeah, it, as it should be. Shouldn't it? <laughs> so we're going to start off. I had the uh, escargot croissant. And, you know, normally when I have escargot, that's that's to your left there. It's on a cruise ship and it has so much butter. You don't really taste it. This croissant was absolutely amazing. I would have it again. And uh, and we paired it with a Chardonnay wine, which was very good. And it was perfect combination, I thought. Well, every year you have whatever their escargot item is. I had the beef bourguignon, which came in the shape so of Mickey, Mickey Mouse. That's very suspicious. And- hidden Mickey. <laughs> I, that's not like how they always, you know, give it. You had a Cabernet there. A Cabernet, yes. And I drank a lot of your <laughs> yours instead. Um, but it was very tender and I definitely recommend it. And I think for the portion size... Uh, on the price point, probably both of them, I would say, are a good value. What a beautiful setting. I mean, just sitting there having these items, it was fantastic. But it's never, never too late for dessert, or too early for dessert, I should say. It's never too early for dessert. We creme started brulee. with the creme brulee, and this had uh, vanilla Choc- and chocolate in it. And this was very good because, you know, I like chocolate. So <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't like a creme brulee? I thought so, it was great. I, you know, we just saw this whole booth... Um, and I almost forgot about this one. Yes, ice pop palm with vodka, apple juice, and Saint Germain liqueur. And palm means apple in French, so that part I, looks, I knew uh, what it was. Looks very apple-y. It is wonderful, so refreshing. Just remember to use that little tip at the top there to catch the, uh, the stuff it, that drips down. Right, because it so does. So you get a little bonus it, shot of it. It melts, <laughs> so you want to be quick on it. And okay, now we're heading to Brazil. We had two things here: the Brazilian cheese bread, and we had the meat pie. And I like both of them, even though I don't like cheese that much. Yeah, that layered meat pie was wonderful. Much better than I would have ever expected. Uh, here's the cheese bread. It kind of reminds me of a local restaurant we have here. Uh, Fogo Fo- de Chao. Fogo de Chao, right. You get this. Similar. And it, it, it is a Brazilian place. So yes. I guess it's a delicacy there. And it's very soft. I definitely recommend uh, actually, I recommend both items. So right. I think we're going to look at the meat pie, which doesn't look like if I looked at that, I'd be like, ugh. 
Like, you probably I don't... should have turned it upside down <laughs> or, or had a piece out of it so you could see the meat in it. Right. And But it's it's actually fabulous. So um, we recommend both of them from the Brazil booth. So at this point, it started raining, and I had to substitute this video I took the, the following day because I, w I wanted to sort of set up where we are. This is outside the American Adventure, and the booth is Hops and Barley. And they have this booth also during the Flower and Garden Festival that has barbecue. Uh, barbecue right. It's all yes. barbecue, right? So in this case, though, we had the Florida grass fed beef slider there with pimento cheese. And we also had a carrot cake with craisins and cream cheese icing. Let's talk about the, the slider first. It, it wasn't memorable. I, I don't think it's worth the amount of money they charge for it, which I think it's probably like four bucks or four fifty or something. Right. This was much better. I enjoyed the carrot cake, kind of like the carrot cake cookie, one of our favorite items over at Hollywood Studios. Well, the carrot cake, the amount of icing that we received, and I think <laughs> earlier in the day they weren't giving as much, but um, but I've seen other pictures since, and they were, but they, it reminded me of a cinnamon bun. So I definitely like that. So now this is the actual opening day of the festival. The festival center itself is open this day. Uh, it had rained the rest of the night, so uh, we went home. And uh, we're going to take a quick look around the Festival Center. And I always enjoy it because it's a former Wonders of Life pavilion, and it only gets used a couple times per year. Right, for, for flower and garden and mm -hmm. uh, food and wine. They should just have a flower garden, food and wine festival. <laughs> What's nice is the Festival Center is open every day, unlike for the Flower and Garden last year, at least, where it was only opened uh, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. It's sort of like the concerts. The concerts are also every day during the Epcot uh, Food and Wine Festival. Now, this is a familiar area to us. that They have food tastings here for an additional fee, of course. Right. We usually just use it for the Flower and Garden Festival. And I just want to say, I thought his name was Andrew Zimmerman until, like, I've That's seen a... him on TV. But I've, I just noticed online that a lot of people thought that Z Zimmern, uh, isn't that funny how, like, I just thought it was Zimmerman all this time. Well, Whenever he was I there saw him on TV. to do a, 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 a breakfast, I guess. Another thing you had to have a separate payment for. It looked like it was over 100 bucks. Yeah. Is That's that right? Good, it looked like it. So I'd have Must to have been a online. good breakfast. <laughs> I, hope it, I hope so. So here's some of the merchandise. I like the logo this year. And they have Figment, of course. Chef Figment. There he is down there. We'll see him again closer. He's been very popular this year. I've seen, I think he's flying off the shelves. Oh, is that right? Uh -huh. And there's Chef Mickey. So who's the, oh, and Chef Figment. I really like the logos and the merchandise uh, this year. I think it's, it's some of the best merchandise I've seen in recent years. And there is Remy, who is one of my favorites. And we're going to see a lot more of Remy later on in the show. But I, I agree. I love Remy. And uh, that was so nice that they brought him in there. And of course, Figment again, Chef Figment for 2015. And Figment was kind of out of the loop for a while. And Real Tervis. Yes, Tervis. And it looks like a wine glass within a cup. And one of the best displays at the whole festival is inside here. Plus, you get a free chocolate. Yes, free Giordelli. 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 And chocolate, again, right. another thing that I used to say wrong all the time because it looked like Giordelli. Um, but they, he actually like asked questions of guests, and then all of a sudden you get like free cho milk free chocolate, chocolate with mocha. That Yummy. was very good. I didn't realize it had mocha in it. Mm, well, now you do. <laughs> but the displays, I think, are better than last year. These are chocolate displays. This one is Frozen. Frozen has arrived at Epcot. And I, the only thing I keep hearing is that, like, Olaf shouldn't be as big as Olaf is. Like, bigger than Elsa. You know, it's like a big, huge Olaf. Oh, I didn't even notice that. I yeah, guess you're I, right. Oh, look at Olaf. is <laughs> quite big. I hadn't I hadn't thought about it until um Well, he's next to Instagram. the trolls. You, you don't... Maybe they made the trolls, and they wanted to make sure the trolls looked different. I don't know. Look at Olaf is half the size of Elsa's castle. <laughs> and then you have the up... Um, again, this is, it's mostly chocolate um, in these displays, and um, it's created by the different bakeries. So like Disney's Contemporary Resort, uh, the Yacht and Beach Club Bakery, um, just like at Christmas time and at Easter, Easter time, especially, right? especially, very similar to the Jeff chocolate Barnes, Easter Barnes, Contemporary eggs. Resort. Oh, yes, yes, we've interviewed him. Yes, he is very nice. Very talented. Mm -hmm. We have the uh, the Avengers here. Marvel in the parks. This is unbelievable. <laughs> and you have uh, Captain America and... Uh, the Hulk, the Hulk and Iron Man. And who was it? And Black maybe, Widow? 
who was like there was a couple of guests who were like where is such and such i think the one who flies probably hawkeye oh well he doesn't fly the falcon one flies falcon, right yeah. sergeant but, pierce too but hawk ha, ha, ha. the hawk uh i think of hawk and flying so anyway two sets of people asked about that now this is really cool star wars the force awakens i mean this movie isn't even out yet and we're already getting uh, chocolate displays of it BB-8? there's bb8 we have a little bb8 yes. i love to drive that guy and he's the about that size yeah he is and just about look that, all yeah. the chocolate chips and it looks like brown sugar down there so it's um i hadn't even noticed that until we just moved in on it very nice very cool displays uh highlight of the whole festival center all right more food africa this is the official opening day beef tenderloin tips and buttered chicken and we have gotten the beef tenderloin tips uh i think this was maybe the third year it really is a nice portion size it always has been we've never been money. disappointed no. uh, in the africa selection and i mean i know we're getting sample sizes for the money but you know, it's nice to feel like you get a little bit of bang for the buck. And I would say with There's the very good tender, bang for the buck here. It's very good. And it's very good. But there are like little hot peppers in there. And fortunately, I didn't get one this time. <laughs> but I have had my mouth on fire <laughs> in previous years. And the other one is um, like a chicken with naan. I don't think that's as much of a bang for the buck. But well, here's the is. beef one again. The beef, much more spicy, but I loved it. I, I would absolutely get Just that Just stay again. away from the green. No, the green is good. <laughs> no, I like the green. Jeff can have all the green. And then um, this was butter chicken uh, with like a naan bread. And I think it was not as... Uh, good of value, but it was still very good. It was, right. it tasted excellent. It just, I didn't think it was as good a value for the money. Absolutely, I would get the, I would get the beef yes. if we were going to be at this particular the beef booth, again. I would booth get. again. So uh, anyway, a great way to start the festival. Here's a shot of uh, both. Of it. it was super hot, very hot this day. So uh, what did we do? All the this? days that we were out, except in the evening when it rained, was it was like baking out. So and the tradition continues now. We're off to Germany every year. I get the roast brat worst and every year it seems to get a little bit smaller <laughs> i've but actually I documented <laughs> this i have pictures of them from the the That's years of shrinkage on the unfortunate <laughs> bratwurst but well but i still think it's not a bad like when you look at the size of it and you get the the roll it's not too bad um, it's $5, not too bad of a price for what you get. It's almost like a full little meal. See, I think what they do is they shrink the bun every year to make the brat look bigger. <laughs> that's brilliant. I Because the bun true. was bigger at one point. So that's a good idea. If you keep shrinking the bun, the, the I still work. think I still think it's not a bad a bad value. And you still like it, right? I, you know what? I joke. I would have it again. I do like it. It goes good with beer. Can't go wrong with that. Uh, you didn't have beer with us. Not this time. Not this time because I was going to have my beer flight at the uh, craft beer area Right, inside. Instead. This made us very happy. The return of the train set. Well, the train display has been down for like two months. I mean, really quite a long time now. And at first we were a little nervous. It's like, is it is it going away? And there are some changes with it. But, you know, I would actually have to have a, a, some of my pictures to kind of say, okay, well, this is different. This is different. There's little bits that I know are different. Everything looks clean. You it looks like uh, they really touched things up. The Epcot Food and Wine Festival booths, you can see some of those down there as well. And the Epcot Food and Wine Festival, the, the logo is this year's logo. So right. I think they did a great job. When we looked through the bushes, the train tracks were completely gone. At one point they were going, we're like, uh-oh. But you can see grease. the grease booth. It looks like they need to clean up the, uh, <laughs> the booths a little bit. But yeah. I guess with the... They've had a rowdy with, crowd down there. <laughs> with the rain and everything, you have hops and barley is mm. there. Um, so it's really nice to kind of see that. And I think there was like a bear attacking a picnic or something that I saw in somebody's picture, which I have not seen. We in will find that. It, it's almost like the Remy hunt, finding the bear attacking the picnic. That'll be good. We need, to go, we need to go and do that. Well, I need to photograph it more. We didn't have a lot of time. Plus it was really felt like a, a thousand degrees out. The next, surface of the sun. Yes. Next weekend, it's supposed to be low 80s. So if you're coming in next weekend, this is a great well, time. Well, this is the place to go. If it's super hot, you want to go to the Chase Lounge. If you have a Chase card. So if you have a Chase card, they will let you and up to five guests up here. This is normally the uh, the lounge at the American Adventure. Right. The VIP lounge. Uh, if you have a Chase Visa card, you can get wristbands for a you and up to five guests for a concert. It, you first you have to person, have the Disney card right, for that the Disney, one. The Disney, the Chase, Chase Disney, Disney card. Visa. And then up to five guests. And then, but fireworks viewing is near Italy and you don't have to have the Disney visa, just the regular Chase 
Visa. And they have a room off to the back that still has the video game. So here is a look at that room. This room I have never seen open before during the uh, Chase Lounge. They, they had one sad little video game normally in the main room. So now there's all kinds of chairs and games and things for uh, people to do. And it's away from everyone talking and all that. So this is a great place to put the video games. I did, on the second day, I didn't see it open. So I don't know if it's always open. They also have something where you can get uh, photos but it's not like you can email it to yourself. You have to sign into like Twitter or Facebook. Well, let's not jump too far ahead. We will. We will. Oh, are we, gonna, we are going <laughs> to gonna demonstrate the photo process. And here's just a look at some of the decor. It's very beautiful. But the highlight, the best part, even better than the sodas, wonderful conditioned air. Yes. Completely nice. And oh, here they, have the, they serve the festival so, wine. Someone there. on my uh, Instagram said that it looked like the most boring place in the world. Not but it true. Actually, it's it is a delightful place nice. to be. We like it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is a wonderful place to be to avoid the, uh, you, know, you know, it just gets crazy when you're walking around the festival. And I almost never drink soda, but I do like the freestyle. So well, I on, like this first, on this first day, two of the three freestyle machines was down. So there's a big line there. That was fixed. We've gone right. back and it was completely fixed. No line. Here's a look outside the window where we were sitting when we're up at the uh, at the Chase Lounge. Right. It was very nice. You can see Spaceship Earth. It really is. Um, it can get crazy. Like we try to get up there. Early, early on, early. you know, like Always 11 o'clock or so. And um, it's nice to just, especially when it's hot out. Like if it's not hot out, it's not as big a deal. This is new though this year. We decided to try it out. It's uh, a, you take your own picture. Oh, look oh at there these. I That's am, like looking shocked. Nice Remy shirt though. I like that. So here we go. We have our pictures and then you can do, oh, look at this. You jump we in just, to get the I, picture of the picture. Yes. And the thing is with this, it says like, and it'll probably show it in a second. You can either sign into Facebook, sign into Twitter. I don't really want to be signing into any place. See, uh, I don't want to be yeah, seeing my I, password. Yeah, I didn't trust in. it. When they want your password, I didn't trust it. So I thought it was better just to take your picture of the picture. That worked for me. Right. And, and so I think that's best. And so back to okay. the mean streets of World Showcase here. We're at Morocco and we're going to have the kefta pocket. And at the, the very last second, you said, yeah, I was get, like, a, get baklava. a baklava. Now the kefta pocket, the only reason I even know what kefta is, is because, because of the Food and Wine Festival. Mm -hmm. I think for $5, like the portion size through the years have gotten smaller i probably won't get it again as far as unless they up the portion sizes for five dollars it's not a lot of meat anymore yeah it was okay but uh, i agree with you i it's nothing special i've had better food than the, um, you know moroccan type food even I across actually, the street you can go across the street right, right to their little uh, restaurant I still like and they have it. baklava there too right you can get baklava uh, at morocco all the time but um, the uh, the kafta, it was still good. It just wasn't a very much of a portion uh, for what it is. The you know the baklava is a baklava, and I think for three bucks, it's three bucks, you know, and um, it's very good. But it is like what you're going to get at the Morocco Pavilion anyway. Right. So I think our next look here is uh, something that we've never tried. You've wanted to do this all a long, long time, Belgium. Right. And I still want to do the other waffles, maybe one of the, like the berry compote. We tried the potato and leek waffle with braised beef. And I thought that was fantastic. Really fantastic. Oh, there you are. I didn't see you even in line there. Wow. Not too <laughs> bad of a line for actually opening day, but it's still early. I agree with you. I thought this was a standout for me. It doesn't look like it's great. Great, but it, it doesn't is, look good, it is, but it, it is, is really wonderful. good. It looks very not good, actually, and the, but it's really good. <laughs> and the portion size, what I thought for the money and the amount of beef was not was not bad. And this is definitely something I would get again. I would get this. Like, I used to not think of waffles and beef or chicken as something you would eat it together. It sounds horrible, actually. <laughs> but, you know, because of the Magic Kingdom, that's the first time I ever had, like, chicken, chicken and, waffle. and waffles. Chicken and waffles, right. And uh, this is, I would highly recommend this one. I'm sure that the berry compote also is excellent, and we will eventually we try will that. research more yes. of this so now we've made our way back to future world for something completely new and this is they're going to have um the sustainable chew and the chew lab is what we'll find here it's from the chew tv show it's not something that i really watch too often um but there are two different booths both themed towards the chew now this is the area where the butterfly tent is set up 
for uh, Flower and Garden. They have never done anything at all here. So this is, again, completely, completely new for this year's festival. Right, and we had uh, two items here, the New York Strip, which is $6.25, and the Liquid Nitro Chocolate Almond Truffle, which is a mouthful, at $4. So you had one winner and one not so much. And the not so much one is right here. Uh, I thought it was very small, very, very small for what you it paid. It looks bigger here than it did in, in person. Well, that's bigger <laughs> than life. It, it's very, it is, like believe me, one, it is very small. One carat. I just thought for six twenty-five, it was very tiny, and uh, they really needed to have something else. And it was just more mashed okay. Potatoes. It was no shulas, you know. It's, right. It was just okay. This this nitrogen dessert that was phenomenal. excellent. So we would not recommend that. I just thought it was a lot of money for that. And but this one was four dollars, and it was it was like ice cream and truffle, and like I just can't even describe it all because there were so many different flavors. Like Remy, like if you watch Ratatouille, is like all these different items all into one and it was excellent anything with nitrogen is good so far we had the nitrogen infused popcorn <laughs> uh, at, at an event we went to it was great so i support nitrogen in your food yummy <laughs> and now we're at the sustainable chew and the only thing we tried here was the ricotta and zucchini ravioli for 475 and uh, i actually like this i know you didn't like it as much as i did but it's it's a lar one large big like pancake looking ravioli well, it was certainly more uh, more bang for your buck than the uh, the strip was i thought so I, it was good you know it's italian so it's hard it was it was again we were kind of rushing it started raining right right as we were tasting this so i don't think i had a fair a fair uh, review of it because it was kind of cold by the time we we ran away to finish it i forgot i had the the basil sangria also this comes from a box and i really like it it's what you'll find at the hoop to do review but the um, the ravioli was very tender, and I thought it was very, very good, so I recommend that one. So while we are hiding out in the rain here at the uh, Communicore, I guess they call it uh, something else Interventions. Nowadays. Interventions. We ran into Mr. The Prince himself and Snow White. Well, yeah. See, I would usually start with Snow White, but I know he... You well, you never, never see, see him. Mr. The he Prince. He never comes out. Yeah, never. <laughs> Just like uh, Kid Fisto, yeah, he never yeah. comes out. So it was very uh, exciting to see them. I guess he was oh, uh, warming up picture. for future events or something. Well, maybe. That's I right. mean, what other events, like Pirates and Princess Party, they could do that again, although it's been I almost 10 years I don't believe that'll be the case. Perhaps it'll be a that. surprise. They'll bring him to the Halloween party. No, I don't think so. So They've I have no idea what he was doing out, but it was a surprise. Okay, this is something new. It's to get your pass holder glass. Port right. glass. If you are a, a Walt Disney World annual pass holder, you do have to visit three times, uh, three different days to receive your glass. They don't have to be consecutive, just three days total. Each day you go, you wait in this line and you get a stamp after you've been through on your third time, you will get the nice glass. At the very end of the show, we do that, and we're going to show that to you. This was day one still. The this line was only crazy. Day one. We only waited five to seven minutes total, and we had been out the door. Um, so we have our glass now. But not quite out the door. Before we left for the day, we went to the craft beer because I needed to try a, a flight. I always try one of the beer flights. In uh, in other years, we've tried Germany. This year, though, we decided we're going to try uh, the craft beer, and I went with flight number one. And this is a former Odyssey restaurant. We remember when it was a restaurant. Yeah, back in the day. But the line, we thought, went pretty quick. and uh... It always had a long line, though. Mm -hmm. Very long line. It was air-conditioned, and there was beer in there. So I can't imagine mm -hmm. why there was always a line. This is the Florida Harvest Beer Flight, flight number one. And these are local beers. Um, they include Brew Hub Key Billy Island Ale, Two Henry's Blueberry Vanilla American Wheat Ale, the Orlando Brewing Grateful Pumpkin, and Swamphead Wild Night Honey Cream Ale. Okay, and I thought that all the beers were very good, but some better than others. Right there in the back, though, is the best deal of the entire festival. It is the uh, the snacks, the beer snacks. Oh, <laughs> for a dollar. One dollar. <laughs> one dollar for the beer snacks. So anyway, I have tried some of these uh, beer. Actually, only one of them I've tried the before. Key Billy, the Key Billy Brew Hub. Because we stopped at the Brew And the Brew Hub, by the way, great place. I highly recommend the Brew Hub. There it is. It's the Key Billy Island Ale, my favorite of the four beers. Very refreshing. I like that it had a very summery, uh, flavorful taste to it. You have that key lime flavor in it a little bit. So um, 
it was good. It was very good. This was the blueberry vanilla uh, wheat ale, and I like that number too. I think it kind of goes in order of what I liked. This was great because even you tried it, and you could taste the blueberry mm-hmm. and the vanilla, so you're not a beer person. I don't like beer. But I was impressed that you were able to uh, try some of these things. And uh, I think the next one we're going to see is the pumpkin. Pumpkin beer sounds horrible. But it, was, it was good. You like that one. It was one. very good. I thought that might have been your number two, but I yeah, know maybe you really it was number two. One. It was between that and uh, the blueberry one, but uh, yeah. I mean, I'm not always a flavored beer guy, but uh, I just wanted to do something different for this this time. And I think my least favorite is the very last one we're going to see, which is the uh, swamp head. That doesn't sound. You know, it doesn't look even as as good. It but looks you very, still you it, still liked it. It's I mean, cold you, beer. <laughs> I know you liked all of them, but yes. but this was your. Uh, number four out of four and something has to be four right even nothing if you was bad it. i right. liked them all i would not turn them down uh, <laughs> i would certainly try i probably will pick up one of the uh, the, the key billies for the house again at some point so but you can find it at the uh, Publix yeah, at celebration Publix, that's right much cheaper much cheaper at the Publix. so and, and the decor was very nice and something new this year they're actually selling the merchandise, merchandise yeah the building. that is a first and uh, a there, little was, bit of there was it. nobody really looking at it because everyone was distracted by the beer in the cold air-conditioned splendor <laughs> of being in the odyssey but at some point i think uh i think it's it, it you know i would even look around and maybe pick something up in there i so. thought it was interesting although you know if you go to the festival center or some of the other places there's a much wider selection of merchandise right absolutely so that wrapped up day one we were back on day two bright and early to play this game it's a remy's ratatouille hide and squeak it's actually our third day if you count the preview day right that's true um and this was a lot of fun it's another scavenger hunt game like they have at easter and i want to say there will be some spoilers but we're only going to show you two locations two out of the ten so if you don't want to know i'll put a little link down at the bottom where you can skip ahead i think it's two out of 12 i think there's 12 locations oh yes that's right 12 so we're you know there's 10 more that you'll be able to see on your own this is an easy one anyway it's the first one in canada the purpose of the game is to find remy and all the ingredients remy needs to make ratatouille and this first one is remy with a squash so you take the corresponding squash sticker and i think i'm going to show you doing that uh, in a, in a, up ahead and then uh, you just put it to the correct country and continue on and here you go and it costs seven dollars and 95 cents plus tax and you get um the stickers you get to do the scavenger hunt and at the end you get to choose one of six pins uh as part of your as part of your prize and it's a lot of fun i found it to be a little more difficult actually than the easter egg hunt the game that they've had here every easter the last three years absolutely i thought it was not as easy as in the past <laughs> But that's good. I mean, it was good to be able to kind of look for it. Now I'm showing this one because this was super easy and it won't really spoil anything. There is Remy in France right out front. A lot of them are much harder than this. But uh, and this is a perfect one because Remy sort of lives in Paris. We just saw the movie it's Ratatouille. Totally, it's totally a spoiler. I mean, you see where he is. But yes, we just saw uh, Ratatouille. It's one of my favorite. It's probably my favorite Pixar movie. He's adorable. And it was so much fun to kind of to look for them. And these are two of the easier ones. There are some that take a little bit more time that I didn't know if we were going to get them. I would recommend if you have access, watch Ratatouille. It really it really helped. It It made it much more enjoyable to just see the movie the night before than play the game. Right. And we didn't really plan to watch it right before playing the game, but it turned out that way. And it really it made it a lot more fun. It got you kind of really got us in the mood for the game. Yeah, I highly recommend it. A lot of fun. And it makes you, unfortunately, it makes you want to get all those pins, but you don't have to play the game every time to get the pins. You could just buy more of the uh, game packets. You can just buy, right, you can buy six game packets and say, I want six pins. And there you are. You don't even have to go around World Showcase. So look at how quick. We got all 12. We found all 12. We're going to go inside to the air-conditioned splendor of the port of entry shop, which is the Not Duffy shop. (laughs) And this says, uh, hide the complete, it's like a little passport stamp. And we ended up uh, buying four maps so that we could get four different pins that we liked. And so, um, again, only $8 each, and you get these really cute limited release pins. Knowing us, we'll probably complete the set. We may complete the set. I don't know why we didn't complete the set, but uh, these are the four we like the most. And uh, and there it is. There is the complete 
map and the four pins that we uh, picked out. So great time. I highly recommend it. It was a lot of fun. We really, you know, I really love the scavenger hunts. And now we are back and this is Sunday. This is, is this Sunday. Sunday. It is day three of the festival, day four in a row for us at Epcot, day six for you. Right. I had been there quite a few times this week and I love Epcot, so I have no problem with it. So here we have the two stamps from the 25th and 26th. And now we're getting our final stamp so we can get our nice port wine glass. And there it is. It's a little bit taller than the food and wine festival guide. Not too much taller, but um, it's, it's not huge, but it's very nice and it's etched. And it says Disney Pass Holder 2015. Again, you have to go three different times to get it. Twice for the stamps and then the third time you're going to go pick it up. And uh, just while supplies last, I hope they'll have them for a long time. That It's been very popular. Well, the lines were extremely long. Extremely, extremely All long. All day crazy for I this. would recommend two things. Early and not weekend. If you can somehow get there early and not go on the weekend, you'll have a much easier time getting these glasses. That's my uh, my thought. And we were there early a lot of the times. It got much longer. I mean, that's a big switchback. Look at that. And it's broken. It, it continues even around the uh, spaceship Earth. A friend said it was like a half hour at that point, but we only waited again five to seven minutes, I think, every time that we, the three days we waited. So that is another year of the Epcot Food and Wine Festival, festival the uh, 20th anniversary year. We had a great time, but uh, we'll be moving on, have completely different stuff including jock Lindsay's next week and and more right jock Lindsay's hangar bar we had a great time there and we would have done it today but we had uh, it's already wine. 20 <laughs> 35 minutes so. <laughs> that's like the longest show ever so that's another show that's another show thanks to our sponsors pixievacations.com time for thinking about christmas <laughs> <laughs> yes, never too early for never christmas. too early yeah maple leaf tickets our official ticket agency and of course theme park connection our original sponsor and they give 10 percent off that's right if you say mouse, mouse steps, steps. <laughs> anyway have a great week everybody and we'll see you next week have a great week